Okay, so welcome back to this second part of the Quest 3 Mix Reality tutorial using this time not the Oculus integration, but the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. So if you missed the last episode, go watch it. We basically made a Mixed Reality setup to have the path through working. And in this new episode, we are going to learn about plane detection. We will learn how to customize the look of the plane, use it for collision only, and even be able to know what type of plane we have, so floor, wall, furniture. As always, if you don't want to miss the next episode about Mixed Reality Encore, make sure to subscribe down below. And if you'd like to get access to the source code of this project and exclusive content, like this awesome Mixed Reality Archery tutorial, you can join 700 other people on my Patreon. The link is in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started! Okay, so we are back where we were left at the end of last episode. Remember, we made this setup right there using the XR origin to see this little cube in mixed reality. But we also added this AR plane manager which we disabled at the very end. But if we enable it back and that we go to File, Build Settings and that we build our game, as you can see, it is working. We already have some plane detection in our mixed reality game. That's awesome, but be careful because that is not really a runtime plane detection like you can have on mobile AR application. Basically, with the Meta Unity OpenXR plugin, we are accessing the scene model that the user can create inside the MetaQuest menu. And for each wall and furniture that he can create during this setup, the Unity OpenXR plugin will spawn a plane with the correct shape and position. Now, anyway, now that you know more about the plane detection and how it works with the Quest 3 and the Unity XR toolkit, let me go back to Unity and customize this plane. Okay, so now if we go to the XR origin, to the AR plane manager, we can see here that the plane prefer that it is used here is here the AR feather plane. Now, as you can see, if we click on the plane prefab, so on the AR feeder plane, we can highlight it here in our project folder. And if we have a look at it, basically what it will do is with this component, so the AR plane, we will create a mesh following the scene model plane that we've made. And we will also have some collision here with the mesh collider. But for the visualization, we have here these two components, so the AR plane mesh visualizer and the AR feather plane mesh visualizer, which will make sure to display some nice feather, so some little dots all over the plane. Now, this is where you can customize here the plane that you want to spawn. For example, you can just simply remove the mesh collider or change the material, or maybe we can even change completely the plane. So, for example, there is another plane than the AR feather plane that we can add. If we right click, go to XR and select at the top AR default plane. As you can see, this will create also an AR plane with the mesh collider, which will be a bit different. Now, if we go to the mesh renderer, we can see that the debug plane which is used is currently pink because it's using the standard pipeline and not the URP which is in this project. So what I'm going to do is simply uh, go back to the assets, right click, create, Material and I'm going to create a new material called AR Plane Transparent. There you go. We can just change the color to something like a bit yellow like this. But I'm going to set the surface type to transparent and I'm going to here reduce the alpha value to something a bit lower like this. So this will make sure that the material is transparent. Beautiful. And now we can go back to the AR default plane and drag this AR plane transparent instead of the debug plane. There you go. So now this has created a new AR plane that we can display. So the only thing that we need to do to use it for the AR plane manager is to drag it in the project to turn it into a prefab. Now, because we have turned it into a prefab, it has uh, saved it in our project file. So we can select the one that we have in the hierarchy, press on delete to delete it, go back to the XR origin and now instead of the AR feather plane, drag the AR default plane. And there you go, just like this, we have now created another AR plane that we can use and you will see it will be a bit different. So just to show you, let me just go to file and build and run to test our game. Okay, and here you go, as you can see it works. Now, instead of the little plane dot that we had earlier, we have now this new transparent yellow plane that we just created. Now, what's really cool with this plane is that it has, as you can see, a line renderer. 
and with the AR Plane Mesh Visualizer, it will actually set up the line renderer to create kind of an outline all around the plane, as you can see here. So here you go, this is how you can customize the look of the plane. So you can basically here change the material of the AR Plane transparent, even change the color of the line renderer or remove it. Okay, so now if you want to only keep the mesh collider and just remove the visual part of the AR plane, so you cannot just uh, here uncheck the line renderer and the mesh renderer uh, because the AR plane mesh visualizer will still re-enable it. So what you need to do is actually completely remove them by right clicking and going to remove component and you can do this as well for the line renderer. There you go, beautiful. Now you will only have here the mesh collider and the mesh filter to create the mesh from these two other components. Now to test this, what I'm going to do is actually be able to spawn these little cube. Now if you remember on my tutorial series on how to make a mixed reality game for the Quest 3, I've actually created a script to spawn some red balls from my right hand. And what I did here was actually, before recording this tutorial, I did something very similar. As you can see, I created not a spawn sphere component, but a spawn cube component. So it's very simple. We take three parameters, the prefab that we want to spawn, the speed at which we want to launch the prefab, and a button to spawn the prefab. And if this button is pressed, we instantiate the prefab at the position of the right hand. We get the rigid body and we add a certain velocity to the rigid body to make it jump out of our end. So feel free to copy this script, it is very simple. And once you've created this script, you can simply go inside the right controller and I'm going to click on add component and here add our spawn cube component that we just made. Now for the prefab to spawn, we can take the cube that we have created in the first episode. And what I'm going to do is make sure that his kinematic is set to false now because we want this uh, cube to be affected by the physics, for example, the gravity. And we will drag it inside the project folder to turn it into a prefab. Now we can remove the one that we have in our hierarchy and we can go on the spawn cube and drag here the cube for the cube prefab. Beautiful. Now for the input action that we want, I'm going to click on use reference and search for activate right. And here is the input action that we want. We want to select here the XRI right hand interaction activate. So actually this input action, if we double click on it, there you go, it will uh, show here the default input action map. And if we go under the activate, we can see that this is linked with the trigger button. So it means that if we press on the trigger button, we will be able to spawn our little cube prefab. So here you go. Now we can spawn a cube and this will allow us to test the collision of our game. So one thing to do it is to build it to test. So let's go to file and click on build and run. And there you go. As you can see, even if I cannot see the plane from my game, I can still collide with it when I spawn a cube and as you can see it works really great even if I shoot some new cube on my desk right there or if I grab one of the cube and that I try to throw it to the walls everything works so this means that we've successfully managed to collide with our real world. Okay so now we already learned a lot from plane uh, tracking with the Meta and Unity Open XR but there is one thing left that I need to show you and it is the plane classification. So when you are creating a scene model within the Meta Quest 3, you can select if it's the floor, the walls, a windows, a desk or anything. But as you can see, it doesn't seem to work here for the plane, which is drawn for all kinds of them. So the big question is, how can you know if one of the plane is the floor or the wall or anything? And the answer is this, with the plane classification from the AR Foundation. Now, as you can see, all plane comes with a certain classification, so a certain tag, which will allow us to know if it's a desk, a couch, a floor, a ceiling, a wall, or anything like this. So, just to sum up this awesome tutorial, let me show you how we can maybe use this. So, actually, let's go back in time, and here on the AR default plane, let's add back here the mesh renderer. We can add back the AR plane transparent, and so my goal here will be to only show this mesh renderer only if this plane is my desk. So how can you do this? Let's go back to the XR origin. And here I'm going to click on add component and create a new component that we can call show only 
this classification. There we go. Now we can go at the top. And at the top, I'm going to add two new namespaces. The first is using Unity Engine. Dot XR dot AR foundation and the other is using Unity Engine dot XR dot AR subsystem. Beautiful. And now we are going to need two variables. The first one is a public reference to the AR plane manager that we have. So we can call it plane manager. And the second one is the plane classification, which we can call classification. There you go. If we save and that we go back to Unity. Already we can see here the classification. We can see that we can choose between wall, floor, ceiling, table, seat, door, windows, and other. And so basically my goal here will be when the AR plane manager spawn a new plane, I'm going to compare the plane classification with the classification that I have on the script and remove its mesh renderer if it's not equal to this one. So right now we can already drag the AR plane manager on the plane manager. And for the classification, in my case, I will select the thing that I don't want to destroy to be the table, which is the classification that I'm using on my desk. There you go. We can go back to the scripts. And now if we want to trigger something when the plane manager is spawning a new plane, what we need to do is remove the start and the update and add a on enable and on disable function. In on enable, we want to do plane manager dot plane change. And if we write plus equals and then we press on tab, as you can see, it will auto fill here a function called plane manager plane change and it will link it to here this action. Now we can rename this one setup plane. There you go. And we can just rename it as well over there. And when we disable the script, we can just copy this line of code and just instead of plus, write minus. To be more clear, let me copy and paste this code over there. And there you go. So this is here the result. Now, basically, it means that when the plane manager will add or remove or change a plane, we will call the setup plane function on this one. And now, basically, with this, we can actually get access to the new plane by doing AR plane new plane equals obj dot add it. Oh, and by the way, I actually did a mistake because as you can see, this obj dot add it returns a list of AR plane. So this means that we are actually accessing all of the plane that are being added. So not just one. So maybe let's do list of AR plane. Beautiful. Now everything works. And now let's write for each, double press on tab to autofill the rest. And instead of collection, we want to write new plane. So this means that for each item that we browse inside the new plane that we are adding, we can basically do anything. And this is where we can use the classification. So in my case, if item the classification equals the classification that we have right there, so at the top, it means that the plane that we are adding is actually the one that we want to keep. So I will do nothing here. But if it's not the case, what we can do is get the renderer of this plane by doing item renderer equals item dot get component of type renderer. And we can simply destroy it. There you go. So this will simply here remove the renderer component. So this means that when the plane that we are spawning is not of type classification, we will simply hide it. And there you go. That's basically it. With this code, you should be able to only see the plane which is referenced here in the settings. So let me save and go back to Unity. And there we go. Now for our classification, we have set it to table. So this means that everything that's not a table will be disabled but only one way to find out and it is to build our game. And there you go guys. So as you can see, now all of the planes are disabled except for the one that I have here on my table, so on my desk. So it means that we have currently managed to know the classification, so the type of plane that we are spawning. And with this, a new door just opened for you to make awesome mixed reality games. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a plane detection with Meta and OpenXR. Make sure to subscribe down below if you don't want to miss the next episode about using Anchor with this setup. 
As always, a big shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work. And if like them, you want to get access to the source code of this project and exclusive content, join us. The link is in the description below. Now, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.